In this video, we're going to have a look at direct proportion and when we're asked to find a value for k. So this is your typical question. It'll say something like, y is directly proportional to x. Find the equation in the form y equals k times x when y is 21 and x is 7. Now the key with these questions is knowing how to set it out and where to start. And your typical starting place is rewriting this sentence here, or this part of the sentence here. y is directly proportional to x. Now how do we write that down in maths? Well it looks something like this. y is directly proportional to x. Now this symbol here means directly proportional to. Okay, It looks a bit like a fishy. Well, once we've got that step down, we then just transform that into an equation format. So y equals x times, well, we've got something here which makes it linked to y. So we're going to put a letter down here to link it, and the standard letter to use is k. Now, I could rewrite this so it looks a bit more like what we've got in the question here. And I am going to rewrite it so we get a bit of consistency. So we've got y equals k times our x. Now, the next part of the question is quite straightforward. We just pop in the values for y and x that we've got. So y is 21, and we've got k times by x, which is 7. So then we need to do a brief calculation here to work out what this k is going to stand for. So we're going to do 21 divided by 7 equals k. So that must mean that k equals 3. Now, once we've got that, we can then rewrite this sentence with our k value in, because we've just worked out k. So let's rewrite that now. We've got y equals k, which we've just worked out as 3, and x. And that's the equation that links y and x together. And these look very familiar because we'd see these in straight line graphs or solving equations or substitution or something like that. And that's basically what direct proportion is. We find an equation that links y and x together and we need to find out what multiple it is that links the two. So let's have a look at another question just to make sure we've got the hang of this. So we've got y is directly proportional to x, so that's our first step. So y is directly proportional to x. Well, the next step that comes from that straight away without reading any more of the question is y equals kx. The next part of the question, we need to pop in some numbers. So we've got when y is 36, so 36 equals k times 3, and then we got, well, we need to work out k from that, so we're going to do 36 divided by 3 equals k, well, that must mean that k equals 12. So the equation we've got that links them in the format y equals kx is y equals 12, because that's our kx. And that's that question done there. Okay, so here's another question I would like you to have a go at. Um, it's exactly the same as the ones we've just done. I just want you to practice the skills that you've just learned. Pause the video now, and on the next slide, I'll show you the answer. So here's the answer to the question I've just set you. So the first step we should have written is y is proportional to x. We've then got the next step y equals kx, so that's directly linked the next step down. We then substitute in our values 49 and 7, so we've got 49 equals k times 7. Well, we need to work out what k is from that, so 49 divided by 7 equals k, so that must mean that k equals 7. And from that, or therefore we've got y equals 7 times x. Now I'm hoping at this point you're finding that this looks quite straightforward and quite easy. However, there is a next step that does get a tiny bit trickier, so let's have a look at that question now. 
So here we are, we've got a question that looks exactly the same as the one before, so no different, and the steps are exactly the same. So let's start working through it exactly the same format. So we've got y is directly proportional to x, so that's y directly proportional to x. And so the next step we get is y equals kx. And then we pop in our values. So we've got y is 18 equals k times 4. And then we're going to work out k from that. So we've got 18 divided by 4 equals k. Hmm. This is the stumbling block. This is where the question differs to the ones previously. Because 18 doesn't divide by 4. However, we've got there a fraction which will simplify. So let's have a go at simplifying that fraction. So we should get from that, well, 18 divided by 4. 18 divided by 4. Ooh, I can uh, divide both of those by 2. So that gets me 9 over 2 equals k. Now, at this step, I could stop because the fraction doesn't simplify any further. I could also do the division now. I've got 9 divided by 2, which I know is 4.5. However, for convenience sake, I would recommend leave your answer as a fraction, or more importantly, an improper fraction. So the answer we've got here is y equals our k value 9 over 2 times x. And that's exactly the same as previous. We've just got a fraction, or an improper fraction, for our answer as k. Now at this point we should be thinking, well, direct proportion is a 7B, level 7, or a nice grade C topic, so nothing there should really be jumping out as too difficult. However, there is another step that they could include the question, so let's have a look at that now. So, this question looks slightly different to the ones that we've done previously. The question now says, y varies directly with x. Well, that's just another way of saying y is directly proportional to x. It's just another way that they could use the language to explain the question. We've then got, when y is 14, x is 5. So we've got two values that we, we know. And they would like us to work out the value of y when x is 6. Now... Up until this point, the question is exactly the same. So I recommend going through exactly the same steps up until this point that we've done for all the other questions. We need to get an equation that links the two. So let's have a go through those steps now. So we've got y is directly proportional to x. Well, the next step that comes from that is y equals kx. We've then got the two values from up the top there, which is 14 equals k times which must mean that 14 divided by 5 equals k. Well, that doesn't divide nicely, and it also doesn't simplify. So the equation we would get from this is y equals 14 over 5x. So we've done everything we would do before for this point here. So the next step is well, working out the value of y when x is 6. So we're given a value for x, and we're asked to work out the value of y. Well, this is where this equation comes in. We're just going to pop in the value for x to work out the value y. So y equals 14 over 5 times by our x value, so 6. So when we're multiplying fractions, we're going to do 14 times 6. 14 times 6, ooh, that's difficult, isn't it? Well, that's y equals 6 times 10, which is 60. 6 times 4 is 24, so 60 plus 24, 84 over 5. Well, does that simplify? I can't see any numbers that would divide top and bottom. So the answer that we're going to leave as is 84 over 5. Here's another question just to practice our skills. So we've got y is varies directly with x. So that's we've just worked out is y is directly proportional to x. Then we're then told that y is 18 when x is 7. 
and work out the value of y when x is 3. So we need our equation. So that's y equals kx. Pop in the values. So that's 18 equals k times 7. Well, that's 18 over 7 equals k. And that doesn't simplify, so I'm going to leave it like that. So the equation we're going to use is y equals 18 over 7 x. Oops, that looks a bit messy. Let's just tidy that up there. So we've got 18 over 7. So now we've got that point. So we're up to here in the question. Work out the value of y when at x equals 3. So pop in our value for x. So we've got y equals 18 over 7 times by 3. So 3 18s, well, 3 10s are 30, 3 8s 24, 30 plus 24, well, I get for that ooh, uh, 54 over 7. So y equals 54 over 7. Does that simplify? No, it doesn't. So the answer I'm going to leave is 54 over 7. So the only increment in difficulty is when they will possibly ask you to work out the value of x when they give you y. So instead of having to work out the, uh, the y value, we're having to work out x, so it's slightly trickier. But it starts the same. So y varies directly with x, so y is directly proportional to x. So we follow that through with y equals k times x. Pop in our values. So y is 14 equals k times by 5. Well, we've seen this one before. Well, that's 14 over 5 equals k. So then y equals 14 over 5 times x. Well, let's go into the next step anyway, as we would any with the previous examples. So y is 20 equals 14 over 5x. Well, let's have a look at how we're going to do this. Well, we're going to do 20 times by 5 to bring that 5 up. So that's 100. We're then going to divide by 14 because that's going to come down. So that's over 14 equals x. Well, I've got a fraction there which simplifies... So 100 over 14 can go to 50 over 7, which is as best as it gets. So that's what we're going to leave it as. Now, if you didn't quite understand how I got from this step to this step, I recommend you have a look at dividing by fractions. Okay? There's no point in putting it into this video where I can, hold, I can dedicate a whole video to doing that kind of stuff elsewhere. Right, so here's your chance to have a go. So we've got a question which is similar to the ones we've, I've given you. However, I've included two parts. So I want you to use your equation from this step when I give you x. I also want you to use the same equation when I give you y. So this is very typical of an exam question. They'll have three things to do. Okay, so your equation, and then work out y, and then work out, work out x. So have a go, pause the video, and I'll go through the answers on the next slide. So here's the answer to the question. So in this section here, I've worked out my value of k. So we go through y is proportional to x, work that through, so k is 4. So therefore, the equation linking the two is y equals 4x. Placing in the value of 9 for x, so y equals 4 times 9, y equals 36, I get there. Okay, so therefore, in the next section, I'm going to use exactly the same as this one here. So y equals 4x. Place in my value of y, so 25 equals 4x. And then we're left with a top-heavy fraction, so 25 over 4 equals x. 
And that is it. I've given you a brief overview of direct proportion. I haven't gone into any context, but the general idea would apply to any context that they could give you in a question. And that's how we look at a direct proportion question.